The liver is a very important multifunctional organ that exists in the human body. So in this lecture, we're going to focus briefly on the several important functions of the liver. Now let's begin by describing what the liver looks like and where the liver is found in the body. So the liver is located in the upper right abdomen portion of the body. It's found to the right of our stomach. So the liver consists of the left lobe shown here and the right lobe and in between the lobes we have our ligaments. We have the coronary ligament and we have the falciform ligament and these ligaments play a role in connecting our liver to other parts of the body. For example, the falciform ligament connects the liver to the anterior portion of the body. Now within our liver we have many ducts, we have many canals that function to allow the passageway and movement of certain substances that are produced by our liver. So we see that the liver is not only an endocrine gland, it is also an exocrine gland and we'll see what that means in just a moment. Now another important structure that functions with the liver is known as the gallbladder and we'll see what the gallbladder does in just a moment. So let's begin by discussing function number one. So the liver functions in macromolecule metabolism. So the metabolism of carbohydrates, of fats and proteins. And this includes the synthesis of, the breaking down of, and the storage of these molecules inside our body. So let's begin with carbohydrate metabolism. So the liver is responsible for maintaining, for controlling the proper levels of glucose inside our blood plasma. The liver cells are responsible for maintaining homeostasis of blood glucose levels. So let's suppose in our blood plasma, in our blood, we have a high concentration of glucose. The pancreas basically releases a hormone known as insulin and insulin acts on the liver cells to cause those liver cells to absorb as much glucose as needed to basically maintain a proper concentration of glucose inside the blood. So liver cells absorb the glucose and transform that glucose into to the polymer form known as glycogen. Now on the other hand, let's suppose our glucose concentration inside the blood is very low. In this case, the pancreas releases a hormone known as glucagon and glucagon acts on liver cells and it causes, it stimulates those liver cells to break down glycogen into glucose and release that glucose into that blood, maintaining a proper level of glucose inside the blood. On top on top of that, it also stimulates our liver cells to undergo a process known as gluconeogenesis. And gluconeogenesis is the production of glucose of sugar molecules from non-sugar constituents such as for example lactic acid and other precursors. Now let's move on to fat metabolism. So we know that when we ingest our lipids or fats, they eventually end up in the small intestine. And inside the small intestine, because fats are hydrophobic, they aggregate to form large fat globules. Now what the liver does is it acts, an, uh, is it acts as an excretory gland, as an exocrine gland. And what that means is it produces a substance known as bile. So the liver cells produce bile, the bile is released into the ducts and the bile is eventually stored in the gallbladder until we begin our digestion process in our small intestine. At this point the bile is released from the gallbladder and it travels into our small intestine. Now what the bile does is it basically emulsifies our fat globules. It breaks them down into smaller into smaller particles and then the enzymes can act on those smaller particles and break down the fats and those fats are eventually absorbed by the cells of the small intestine. 
Now, those absorbed fats eventually end up in our blood system, and the liver cells are capable of absorbing those fatty acids, and they store the fatty acids in the form of triglycerides. Now, when the cells of our body, when our body needs energy, what the liver cells can also do is they can also actually break down the fatty acids and use the fatty acids to form ATP molecules, energy molecules, in a reaction known as beta oxidation. And finally, what the liver cells can also do is, if we eat too much sugar or too much protein, what the liver cells do is they transform the sugars or the protein into fat. Now, let's move on to our protein, the final type of macromolecule that we ingest into our body and that our body actually needs to survive. So, we actually ingest 10 essential amino acids that our body cannot actually manufacture, but the other 10 non-essential amino acids are produced by the liver cells. So, the liver can produce the 10 non-essential amino acids. And the liver can also use the 20 total amino acids to basically produce important types of proteins such as, for example, albumin and fibrinogen. So albumin is the protein carrier of fatty acids in the blood plasma, while fibrinogen is an important type of enzyme, an important type of protein that is involved in the blood clotting cascade, as we'll see in a future lecture. Now, finally, in terms of the protein metabolism, liver cells can also convert ammonia in the blood into urea, which is then excreted by our kidneys. So when our glucose concentration in the blood runs low, when it is very low, what the liver cells can do is they can actually break down proteins into amino acids and they can use those amino acids to transform the amino acids acids into ATP molecules. In the process, we produce ammonia, which is a toxic substance. So what the liver does is it takes the ammonia, a toxic substance, and it basically transforms it into urea, which is excreted by the, uh, by the kidneys to outside of our body. So the second important function of the liver is in detoxification. So this, uh, this basically means taking toxic substances that are detrimental to our body and transforming them into less toxic substances that can be released by our body. So the liver cells are responsible for ridding the body of a wide range of toxic, of poisonous substances, for example, drugs that we ingest into our body, alcohol that we ingest, uh, different types of metabolic end products, such as, for example, lactic acid, as well as ammonia that we just described above. So remember, when we break down amino acids into ATP molecules, we produce ammonia, a toxic substance, and what the liver does is transforms that ammonia into urea, which is a non-toxic substance that can be excreted by our kidneys. Now, the liver also detoxifies pollutants, various types of contaminants, and many, many other uh, things. So the liver converts these toxins, which are usually fat-soluble, into water-soluble waste products that can easily be excreted uh, in either our bile, which uh, eventually ends up in our feces and is excreted by the large intestine. It can end up in the urine, which is excreted by the kidneys, or it can end up in the sweat, which is, uh, which is excreted by our skin, and we'll talk more about sweat and the skin structure in a future lecture. Now, the third function of our liver is in blood storage, blood filtration, and the recycling of erythrocytes, also known as red blood cells. So the liver can actually expand. So the blood vessels inside the liver are capable of expanding, and that means the liver can actually act as a storage system for blood. So 
the blood vessels in the liver can expand to store extra blood that might be needed by the body in a future time. Now, specialized phagocytic cells inside the liver known as Kupfer cells are responsible for phagotizing, for eating up, engulfing, and breaking down infectious bacterial cells that are found inside our blood plasma and found inside our liver. And, and on top of that, these same Kupfer cells can also recycle and break down the old red blood cells that no longer function properly. So these red blood cells are also known as erythrocytes. Now, function number four of the liver is to basically store important types of vitamins such as for example vitamin D as well as iron that are essential for our body. Now earlier we mentioned in a previous lecture we basically mentioned that our liver can also act as an endocrine gland. It can produce a special type of enzyme, special type of protein that acts as a hormone. So basically liver produces thrombopoietin which is a glycoprotein hormone that is responsible for controlling the blood clotting cascade as we'll see in a future lecture it is responsible for producing platelets that are involved in the blood clotting process now Finally, it acts as an exocrine gland. It produces this special type of bile substance that we spoke of earlier that is needed to actually emulsify and break down our fats inside the small intestine. So the liver also has other functions, but these are the five or six primary functions of the liver.